so glad that all our hundred children to join we one more again. Right here where I be, on this island, in the sea. Sintelna, oh, I ain't just where I be. Oh, this your day, them a family. Honey, children, this your day. We gonna bring honey right here with me. So honey can take a lead journey, but yet about who we be. We be Galagichi anointed people. I the queen quite head from the body of the Galagichi nation. So glad that Hona taught him not robbery, but tune in one more again, but zooming in on sustainability. This your day, we gonna take a moment of silence but all we ancestors will be coming to this just sea island in the Gullah Gitchin Nation. We're called Santa Elena, Sintelna, this your beautiful place on the sea. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. Now, hundred children the deer and thing like that, and you ever gone through South Kakalaki? Oh, plenty of anything that children crack a teeth out, call it out, the deer. All this year, near Carolina, ever such a thing back again. When the Yama see the Cree, the Adisto, the Kosabo, all of them children, what be even a Guale there, what be part of this year people call them a Scorian people, but they are for the evil man think of Malinke, Yuri, Bakola, Gizi, Mendi, Temni, Fiki, Baby, and all the other rest of children get you from Akebula, many giant together. Like of all these other new children, what do you now? What are you? About the call, the Gullah Geechee. But this year, the way the blood come from, the roots come from, right here, in this year land, in this year sea. This your place in Beaufort County, South Kakalaki. What back of Yona, them in the cracky tea, them call Chikara. All of this year land, where we still are stand. So other rest of people who want cracky tea, they want to know, where this year? Where they there? Where are you? Find the Gullah Geechee and thing like that. But this year, the way Hona Kick on you, but she on for true. And so we don't do this your thing. So Hona Kick did that and she on. And then Hona for Hona did that, Kick on you for she on. Because we the been you. We in the Guay know it all, all. So because of technology, we bring who we be to all of y'all. So yes, now you don't have to just get ready to journey and to come to the Sea Islands. Because of technology, I have an opportunity to share with you from here where I am in the Sea Islands, right to where you are at home, anywhere in the world. And as many of my viewers know for zooming in on sustainability, y'all know I'm not only Queen Quet, Chiefess and Head of State for the Gullah Geechee Nation, but I'm also a computer scientist and mathematician. That is what my degrees are in. That's the field that I worked in for quite some time before returning to the fields that I'd worked in growing up, harvesting and things like that. You understand? Now, over the years, I have watched people who are in academic institutions come in and try to harvest the knowledge base, harvest the intellectual property, harvest the spiritual energy and our spirituality, even in some cases, from my native Gullah Geechee community. I'm a native of St. Helena, Palawana, and Dato Islands. Both sides of my family are from those three islands that are clumped together right near each other in Beaufort County, South Carolina. We sit right down a piece from Georgia. We're right next door. So it's closer for me to get to Georgia than it is for me to get to Charleston in the same state. So a lot of people don't know a lot about geography. And I learned that when I would talk about my home and the fact that I literally grew up in the Atlantic Ocean on sea islands off the southeastern seaboard of mainland United States. The Gullah Geechee Nation goes from Jacksonville, North Carolina down to Jacksonville, Florida. It encompasses all of these sea islands and 30 to 35 miles inland to the St. Johns River to, a, to this space and place that's called the Low Country. So you will come to this region, you will hear the Sea Islands, the Low Country, the Coastal Empire, the Golden Isles, all of it is the Gullah Geechee Nation. You will also hear of a place called Beautiful Beaufort by the Sea, the town 
of Beaufort sits on the island of Port Royal, where also the town of Port Royal sits in the Port Royal Sound in Beaufort County, South Carolina, where St. Helena Island also is located, as was well Paris Island, Hilton Head, Fripp Island, Dator, Defusky, Ladies Island. All of these are names you may have heard of in other places. All of these are the sea islands and that's what makes Beaufort so beautiful is that it's all by the sea because it's predominantly sea islands. We have very little mainland of Beaufort County, Yamasee and all up that road there as we say, those are connected. But as you come in to town from I-95 on Highway 21, you'll see even highway signs say islands and you'll say, why does it need to say that? I ain't crossed no bridge yet. And then ahead of you will be a bridge and there'll be another bridge and you keep going, there'll be some more bridges. And so here it is, St. Helena, links a lot of people who come in through Buford and Ladies Island or Port Royal Island and Ladies Island. They come in and then they want to head to our beach out at Hunting Island, which was part of the Hunting Islands that now a little sand spit that got built up called Harbor Island is out there, Pritchard Island that was a study areas out there. Many of you have seen us fighting to keep that kind of destruction meant off of Bay Point which sits right next to St. Helena, and then across would be Hilton Head. And so you've seen us just in the past couple of years fighting and winning against that, and now we have to take that issue to court. Well, that's another topic for another show and another day. So all of you who want to subscribe to the TV shows, make sure you go to gullahgeechee.tv. gullahgeechee.tv and subscribe for free. You will never get charged for that, okay? And we have Gullah Geechee Rhythm Radio. Go to blogtalkradio.com slash Gullah Geechee, G-U-L-L-A-H, G-E-E-C-H-E-E, -E -E. ain't no I and Geechee for the week. And Hona Kayeti Mobile, what are going on with the court case we got against the destruction at Bay Point? Because we don't ever want St. Helena Island to begin to be a twin to Hilton Head in the state Hilton Head is in. At one point, Hilton Head Island was a twin to St. Helena Island. It was rural, it was two lane road. I remember when it could have been across the road and thing like that, when we were going Singleton Beach or the Gullah Geechee on back yonder, or even a time back then. So it is absolutely abominable to see now the traffic to see now all the buildings, to see now how when storms hit, the damage, the catastrophic damage caused to the waterways due to boats and marinas being torn apart, private docks being torn apart and thrown into fishing areas. To know the pollutants that have streamed off because of golf courses and all these chemicals at marinas to clean the boats and all these things that are aesthetically pleasing to some can be poison to others. And so we didn't want that poison to come into the waters and into the lives of our family. As I said to you in Gullah, St. Helena, this land is me, this year to my family. And so here it is that today I'm gonna have an opportunity to introduce you to my family from right where you are, because we now have the St. Helena story map. And so you'll be able to engage with it by the time we finish this broadcast. So those of you who have been supporters of Zooming In on Sustainability since we started this program, you know that we had Dr. Kate Derrickson here to discuss resourcing the community. Well, she has joined me again today from the University of Minnesota as we promised you she would, so that we could show you what we were working on and why would I be all the way in Minnesota in the cold, London the chilling neighbor who we be in the Gullah Geechee Nation. So Dr. Derrickson, I'm so happy for you to rejoin us today 
And just as we have just completed our Weeby Gullah Geechee course and have this outstanding historic opportunity to share the outcome of that course with the world. How honey to do today? I'm great, Queen. Thanks for having me again. It's great to be here. Yes, I'm so happy that our viewers are going to get a chance. They know now that we ain't a storyteller tall, tall, that we ain't telling to her in that story just for telling them that. And we didn't just go ahead and say, oh, we're going to come back and we're going to show you what we worked on and they never show up. They know that we are women of our words and that we are back. So why don't you tell them? Because some folks listen to say story. Did she say story map? How the map going to be a story? How how that work? So why don't you tell folks, what is a story map? Because you're a geographer. So tell us, what is a story map? A story map is, uh, it really looks like a, a website to most people, I think. Um, but it's a, a, a product that a mapping company has made that allows you to make uh, really dynamic, interactive websites that have maps embedded in them, that have multimedia embedded in them. And students and our community collaborators have just found that it's a really effective way to gather uh, a story together and introduce a new audience to, um, you know, a variety of different kinds of data and narrative and images and sound uh, and maps. So it doesn't really look like a map, although there are maps embedded in it. It really just looks like a website. Right. And then when people use it on their phone and on their computers, it just looks like an app, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That you can really interact with. And I love that because as a Gullah Geechee person, y'all can already see how animated I am and how we like to interact. And I think right now, in the midst of a pandemic, a lot of people want somebody, something to interact with. So as a geographer, what do you think is the advantage to having, say, this tool, the story map, versus just a good old map that we just roll out on the table and look at nowadays? Well, I think you'll see when we when we show you the story map that the ability to be interactive and to, um, you know, travel, really, we tried to set it up in a way that you kind of travel throughout St. Helena Island and you're kind of dropped in and situated in different places and in different times. Um, and so you don't get that with a static map, even with Google maps or some of those things, those apps that you use on your phone um, that can be helpful for navigational purposes. Um, I don't think it gives you the t the feeling of being in the place, which, as you know, was one of the goals of this this story map. Absolutely, absolutely, and I really think it that that our students not only got the goal but they're going to get the gold. That's why I wore my gold today. So Hunter Chillin, y'all know we always talk about being black gold and richness. And I thought that this was so rich. This was so positive for my culture, for my specific community that I knew we got the gold. So I had to put my black gold on the day so that we could do this official unveiling on behalf of my ancestors, on behalf of my family, on behalf of the St. Helena family. And we pray that everybody would there from St. Helena and things like that, that, that Hunter Chillin' Gwine on download this year. And the only way I could know that Hunter done did it and watch him and things like that, is when you go all the way to the bottom, then Hunter can put your name and thing in there. Okay then, put your email and thing on, all right? So there's a space at the end of it where you can put your email address in. That's gonna be the way that I know you actually interacted with this and then you're gonna be added to our database so that when we're doing activities and we're doing events again and we want everybody to come on back home, come on back and join us in celebration uh, you know, we the Binion, we ain't going nowhere tall, tall. So we ain't care what Rona to do, we got deal, okay? And so definitely this will be a way that you know that you will get St. Helena related information about what's happening. But also this is an educational tool and we have some other educational toolkits that we want to send out because we know so many people are at home wanting to learn not only about our culture, but about some of the things we're going to show you in this story map journey. So Dr. Derrickson, you think we ready to let them see it? What do you think? Yep, okay, let me share my screen here. Yeah. 
Let's get to the goodies. This is like, yeah, early Christmas, y'all. We unwrapping it right there. See, right here on the chilling den, dear, right here on Sintel Nala. Y'all can already see how the water to bring me, the water going to take me back. So we had to start y'all with the Florida water. And then there's a welcome and it's in Gullah Geechee too. And so as we welcome you to St. Helena, y'all are getting my voice. You want to click on them, Dr. Derek said, and let's see if, it, if the thing will crack your teeth. I right now. Me down and spine that crack your teeth for C. When it come from this island one day, it step on you and look for where you can see. But it ain't been know about the man what on day, ya. Kusabo create this story, you must see. Mama Africa chill and know where to do. I may be right. So then she make sure for join them for Vinya. And he fight. He ain't never get them for Gwani Chi in the field. This is the gotta get your spirit for real. So we going to get you even this year day. Beautiful. Still going to be the word I'm going to say. I'm going to go ready for a crack and teeth this year week. I'm going to make come for the children. What day in the willingness to pray. Shouting and clapping. But thank God for all we done key. Because it's so glad if we are anointed and free. Yeah, I'm going to chill and come for see. This your blessed plan of the Gullah Geechee. Welcome. To St. Helena Island. Go ahead and take the journey. Now, believe it or not, I never wrote that down. So it's good to hear it again. It was one take, one time, never wrote it down. Um, so it's good to hear that. This year, the St. Helena. And so go ahead, Dr. Derrickson, tell them where do we head next as we go into this first section. So what the map does now is try to, or what the website does is try to give you a kind of zoom in on and situate St. Helena Island in time and space. So you can see in the, this area here, we start to zoom down in. And as you scroll down the map, you start to see uh, the actual island of St. Helena come into focus and then there's some information about um, the original name of the island the indigenous peoples and then um, some information about uh, where it's situated in relation to the ocean and the intercoastal waterway um, the reach and scope of the Gullah Geechee nation itself and St. Helena in relation to that and some information about um, the Gullah Geechee Nation, some information about Queen Quet. Um, and then if we keep scrolling down, we get to a new section um, that has a land acknowledgement and talks about the um, settlement by Europeans and the arrival of enslaved Africans to um, the island. And this your part is where we crack we teeth for the root. It's called we root. And as we always say, one of my sick at the root for heal the tree. This is one of my favorite features of it, is that you see the the mm -hmm. bird as you scroll the, the, um, yeah. the yeah, right. That was one of my favorites as well. I really, really love that. And the wing is upward. They were ever going upward. Yes. So the students did a really wonderful job with the look and feel of this, um, obviously uh, directed by Queen Quet. But, um, you know, when you are looking at a story map um, to give you some context, when you're looking at a story map to, to build, none of this is there. They picked the um, just everything you see about the look and the feel and the color scheme um, is, is their original contribution. Um, and I just, I was really impressed with what they did here. And then of course, this is a, um, I don't remember the artist's name, but did you wanna? Her name is Sandra Renee Smith. And this is one of her original art pieces. And if you'll notice in the upper left-hand corner on the map, there's a little eye right there. And you see it's called We Home, Gullah oh. Art by Renee. And so throughout the story map, some of the imagery that was chosen 
pour it, you'll see those little information circles and you can click on there and get a little bit more detail about some of the pieces of where they came from. But this one, the students pulled because they thought it exemplified showing the family. So when we talk about Centel Nafos family in the 1500s, they thought that this was a beautiful image to show family on St. Helena. And Sandra Nay Smith is part of the St. Helena family. She is a native from here, from Scott community. So we here have more information about um, rebellion, resistance, and resilience in the ar arrival of enslaved Africans um, and their um, being enslaved on the plantations that were in the region. Um, we have this cool feature here. It can be a little slow to load because of the while of load. Yeah. So information packed. So data packed. So when mm -hmm. you go and use this on your computers and your phones, don't think it's broken. It's just that it takes a little while to load all the features because it is so interactive. And this is a part you definitely do not want to miss. A lot of people email the Gullah Geechee Sea Island Coalition asking about the journey our ancestors took from the motherland, from Al Kebulan, to getting here to the Gullah Geechee Nation, as well as they want to know about those indigenous ancestors that are also part of our bloodline. So as you've heard, this situates everything on the resistance and the rebellion, but also on the actual legacy of the fact that there was enslavement, but there was always a pushback against it. There was a fight against it. So this interactive map that looks fully loaded now that you can see takes you on that journey. So you see the dark indigo looking circles on the right that shows you the motherland and where there were forts where people were kidnapped, captured, placed in those forts and then shipped out. And then the red lines show you the different transfer points. So Dr. Derrickson, if you wanna go back up a little bit so they now it's fully loaded, they can see how it loads, that would be nice, yeah. And then that way they can see how that transitions. Now y'all see that. And so you can see the colors again were chosen specifically for this. And so that red, that blood still flows through those waters. And then as you see in the Americas, where the arrival points were and the red circles, the smaller they are, those are smaller ports. The larger they are, those are larger enslavement ports. So that's the places where people arrived and then were sold. So if you can see on the Gullah Geechee Nation's coast that Charleston and Savannah were some of the larger points along here. So we then go into another feature that I really like that shows um, the island itself. And, oh, I got ahead of myself here. And then we found in the waterway that we bloodline. So we get a sense here, I, I got ahead of myself. The thing that I am really excited about is coming up shortly. Or did I miss it? Did I scroll too fast by the different plantation names? Or no, that's coming. No, it's coming. Mm -hmm. So um, this gives you a sense of um, what the geography of enslaved people and the uh, pre prevalence of plantations. Um, and then, yeah, we zoom closer into Gullah Geechee Nation. And we see here again down in St. Helena, on St. Helena and in the surrounding area. And you get a sense of the different kinds of plantations and the different crops that they were growing. And it, I had never seen this quite represented like this until they Neither put this on I. the story. <laughs> yeah, need that I. And I thought it was wonderful that, of course, you know, the first thing I saw was the purple or lavender. Y'all know that. That's what I saw because that's my color right and the goal around it but then to see that then in the legend it lets it be made clear that the gray and the white patterning is what they're using to represent where the carolina gold rice is and the indigo is the purple the light purple that you see or the lavender looking color and then the brown that they call it but looks kind of golden on my screen is where cattle 
was even there. We often have to explain to people that we didn't just do agricultural work in the field. We also were the original cowboys and girls. We did the open cattle grazing and raising even here on the coast and then later part of the Gullah Geechee diaspora because we have a diaspora within the diaspora spread out and did this work as they went westward and became part of who y'all call the Buffalo Soldiers. So yes, just like you Dr. Derrickson, I thought it was wonderful and sometimes on the smaller screens you don't see all the detail that they put into it because I even love the way that they had the little drawings etched in to show you these crops growing um, even further inland and everything. So yeah, job well done. I think it's also interesting to see the prevalence of indigo plantations because I think we, I know the story is often of Carolina gold rice, um, but, but that shows us how important the indigo plantations were, um, which makes sense when you look at the topography, the geography of what we know about where you could grow rice, but Absolutely. To see it laid out on a map like that. Yeah, and um, then to see the cotton take over later on is wonderful too, mm -hmm. to see how they switched over time and what was the economic power at a particular time. Like I tell people now with the environmental changes, the tide has become king, but cotton was king one time. And if cotton was king, rice was queen. Yes. So then there's this other new slider feature that they made, which shows... Um, the historic plantation names, and then it shows you um, uh, present day aerial photography, just to give a sense of um, the kind of history of the place and then how that impacts the geographies of St. Helena today. And when you look at an aerial photograph, you can really get a sense of the density and the land use um, and try to kind of go back and forth and look at how different plantations then were became used for different different land uses. And then folks who are from Nate from St. Helena are going to love the grayscale version here because those plantation names are the same names of the communities. And so if Hona say, well, I did from Frog, well, I did from Scott, I did from Lansing and all that, then Hona Chillin can get in close, especially if you're on your phone and you can enlarge it, or you have a large monitor that you're watching this on, you'll be able to see clearly where your family is from and literally pinpoint it on this map. So a lot of work went into putting all of that together. <clears throat> there are some great images too um, of the histor history of the place that are in um, th sprinkled throughout um, and some really great videos that we won't obviously show now, but that are informative and s situated throughout. They should and relax. land. Special field order number 15 in the reconstruction era for all 100 children who be the top but 40 acres in a mule, they shared a hundred section for true. So here again, um, some videos and a description of the field order and its impact on the region and describing the, um, the relationship between the field order and the geography of Gullah Geechee Nation, which of course we know that um, that field order wasn't enforced, but it did, um, I think we can say shape some decisions that Gullah Geechee people made about where they would settle and how that they would establish um, themselves in the way in the reconstruction era. Um, and some information there, some more information there about that. And then this takes a little while to load, but it I'll just shows you the geography of that again. Um, and we get to zoom into St. Helena Island. Um, and then we, move into some uh, a video about the legacy of, of 40 acres and a mule. Stay in ya, we the been ya, and we in the guay no way. Tall, tall. This gets into the history of the role of fraternal orders in Gullah Geechee culture um, and kind of elevates a, a history that we don't often hear, um, which is, is really interesting and shows some of the historic buildings um, that played a role. I love this picture too. Yes, one of my favorites. I'm so happy that this picture was uncovered at the Library of Congress 
from back in 1939, so much so that whenever I show this picture to my mother, she starts pointing out people and who they have to be in this image uh, from that time frame, because no doubt she and my other family members were out there at that celebration, the 4th of July celebration in the Corners Community Preservation District now, which I chair, is actually a major point of entry and a major point of celebration here on historic St. Helena Island. So this picture captures that and how we continue that now. And so when we talk about the fraternal orders, we talk about them in a context of Africanness, not about being Greeks. And we talk about the actual legacy and story of secret societies. So going back to Kemet, and moving forward to all of these different societies that still are ongoing here on St. Helena and throughout the Gullah Geechee Nation as well. Well, honey, chilling the Gwindo, the Great Depression and Great Migration, going on through 1920 and 1950. So here we get into the um, spread of the Gullah Geechee diaspora throughout the United States, looking at the way people moved. Um, for uh, economic opportunity, um, and in some cases to get away from the Jim Crow era um, up into the north. And so the students made some really great, um, again, maps and visual representations that may take a minute here to load. Yeah, this one is very data filled. And so for a lot of people who are part of the Gullah Geechee diaspora and you live in Northern areas and you live out West, you will probably interact with this section of the story map a great deal. So go right ahead, Dr. Derrickson. So this shows the main pathways that people tended to take um, during the Great Migration. Um, and then we get to see using this slider feature um, the kind of 60 year period, uh, during, and the imp impact of that on the, of the great migration on the geography of black people throughout the United States. And so you can see here, um, in 1910, you see a real dense concentration in, um, the areas that we would predict, but then you get a sense when you slide it over that by 1970, um, you know, we see uh, pockets of um, Black people concentrated in more spread out a little bit and spreading kind of a little bit further west. So um, it just gives you a sense of the change in that, you know, comparatively brief time period of 60 years, um, how people moved throughout the United States. And I, I love these features because you can see the can see the population change over time. And then the students also looked at the uh, role of railroads in that, um, in, in the distribution of people. We were especially interested in the way that um, railroads played a role in um, some people moving south as well. And so Queen Quet mentioned a Nassau County story map that we had put together. Uh, and that looks at, um, that looks at the kind of migration of some people, some Gullah Geechee people down to North Florida um, and in part because they worked on trains or in part because the train went straight right through there. And also to go work on ports because we had a number of people who ended up down in that area because they went by shrimp boat. They went by other modes of transportation by water, but the railroads were so critical because even in Georgia, we had the Gandhi, uh, Gandhi dancers who were the ones who laid the tracks and then later the Pullman car porters. So we did a tribute here to the late Deacon Willie Robinson who lived to be over 100 here on St. Helena Island, God bless the dead. And so we didn't want to leave him out because he speaks to that legacy of the Pullman car porters and getting on them tracks for real and heading north. We have some um, information about the Penn School as well and the role that that's played in historic preservation. Um, and then we move into a new section. Ash versus culture, man is gonna take on a with money can't. 
And so here we start to do the comparison with uh, that I think Queen was mentioning earlier with Hilton Head Island and the way that development happens there um, as compared to St. Helena. So as y'all know, I call it destructionment. So this starts to give you a good look at it and you can already see the juxtaposition with this imagery. But as we continue to scroll down, you start to learn more about the historic legacy, the links between how St. Helena is situated and Hilton Head in Beaufort County, but then what went on with the establishment of the first Freedman's Village called Mitchellville, which exists only on Hilton Head now as a tourist attraction. It is not still a place where Gullah Geechee's live. For the most part, the Gullah Geechee families have been displaced in a gated areas there in the airport and everything else, but they have a village they've rebuilt to do reenactments there because all of this was tied to what we continue to speak about as you scroll down, that they ended up at the South Carolina General Assembly establishing their own rules and regulations for Hilton Head and bringing in this bridge and then bringing the destruction in that would displace folks. And this is a critical quote. In places like Hilton Head Island, South Carolina, real estate developers engaged in various forms of legal chicanery and economic exploitation to claim the one asset African Americans possessed in relative abundance, land. In the process, developers displaced families, disintegrated communities, and dismantled the economic foundations that Blacks struggled to build under Jim Crow. Clearly, the Sun Belt did not bypass the Black South. It plowed over it. And that's from Andrew Call from Coastal Development and the Making of the Modern South. Now, over a million people have watched this video where myself and Day Clean, the African spirit, speak to this topic. And they named it a vanishing history. But as you all see, we ain't a vanish. We did right you anything like that. And so we wanted to show that. But over a million people have watched this Vice News piece that we felt was the most eloquent way for you to engage with seeing more of what has happened and what we're fighting against to this moment through this to stop the destruction. Now this indicates for you what many of you have signed a petition against this year, how they still use the word plantation. That's why this section is called the new plantation era because where there were original plantation names on the St. Helena map, the Hilton Head map becomes a bunch of names they put there that did not exist in the, 50, the antebellum era, didn't exist. But when they wanted to gate the areas, they wanted to live on the plantations. So they started naming them plantations again and started a new era of servitude on Hilton Head. So these gifts that were done by Dr. Ryan Thompson of the Gullah Geechee Sustainability Think Tank dramatically show you the changes. So you can see the density that changes on Hilton Head between 1984 and 2016. And then as we scroll down, you see the juxtaposition to St. Helena and you see that St. Helena's gift doesn't look like it's moving much because we don't have all that overbuilding and infill happening in that same period of time. Pun up, pun, hold and pun on the property, the heirs property on St. Nala. So this section gets into the details about heirs property, what it is and how it works uh, on St. Helena. And it talks about the way that, um, I think it attempts to depathologize, heirs uh, property often gets talked about as something that is a kind of incorrect or not proper way to hold land. And I think what um, this quote by Mr. Hayward and the conversation that's part of this um, section illustrates is that this is a culturally relevant way of owning land and it's the property laws and that are not culturally relevant. Um, and so kind of tries to talk about why people like to own land in common and different ways that they have organized to um, be able to protect their collective land ownership. 
And then we have a link to the Land and Legacy Fund, which is a fund that is used to help people who hold on to their land when either they are unable to meet the tax bill requirements or in other contexts. And I don't know if you want to say more about that, Queen. Yeah, and also some cases are where we have to fight, like I mentioned, Bay Point as an example and having to go to court now with that case. And just as I came on the air, I was just asked by our attorneys, should they file to also go up against the destruction heirs that want the sand mine on Defusky that have also appealed. And so these are legal battles. And so we have to have funds, whether it's just to get people to meetings, get them to hearings, get them to depositions, um, pay for things so that we can get the proper recorded information into these cases. So this fund pays for all of that. It also pays when you all see me going to represent all the hundred chilling at the United Nations. This fund helps to make sure we're represented internationally, nationally, and locally in legal matters that will protect our land and our waterways and our rights. And again, at different places throughout, you're able to download the bibliography, which we tried to keep the page as clean as possible. But if you're interested in digging into this information in a, uh, in, in a more thorough way, um, the citations are available here. To our nation within a nation, the nation in a nation. This is by Alexander Garden. Long before we declared ourselves as the Gullah Geechee Nation, we were already called the nation in the nation. So when our ancestors were even dealing with chattel enslavement, they were still considered a nation within a nation because we always have been the black majority until the destruction meant started to come. So it took us taking our stand for our human rights and our land rights and our land sovereignty to be able to still stand here today as an internationally recognized nation. So this section, of course, talks about the concept of land sovereignty and land-based livelihoods and the collaboration between Gullah Geechee Nation and other indigenous communities uh, toward land retention and um, land sovereignty. And this is, you know, an image of Queen's um, attendance at or at the UN to advocate for this. And again, um, opportunities to make contributions to this ongoing effort for the reasons that Queen described. And now this is my favorite part of the whole thing. I love the whole map, but this must be my favorite part, right? Sure. Cause now y'all hundred children like for things that we back on in the past. And if we in the top, but the feel and the work in the field and the singing thing or the stir food, y'all think that are all the thing that we do. And that ain't true. Okay, look y'all. So now you get a chance to see the section we call St. Helena Stars, because there are a lot of native people from St. Helena that have accomplished some major things and are not often given their due credit for what they've done or what they're doing. So you're gonna recognize some people in the section. You're probably gonna say, oh, I ain't even know they've been Gullah Geechee. I ain't know they from St. Helena. So yes, yeah, so this section I just love for that because it brings you to the modern day. And it gets to share a lot about our story and welcoming you in. So here's the Legree family. When we were up with Captain Legree, who you're going to see several times in this section, God bless the dead, who was our cast net maker here and our oldest member of the Gullah Geechee Fishing Association. And this is his whole family in Columbia when he was honored for being a traditions keeper of Gullah Geechee culture at this General Assembly. Which one is him, Queen? Is that him okay, here? Far left, far oh. left. Yeah, right there where you are now. Yes, that's him with the hat on. Yeah, and you'll see him better in some of the other pictures as we go down through here. And so we talk about him. We talk about these ladies here. Dr. Najma Thomas and I are both living legends, according to the founders of Black History Month, ASALA, the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. And that is Miss Sandra Renee Smith between us next to her artwork. So she's the artist whose artwork you saw earlier in the story map. And we're all native, proudly natives of St. Helena Island. Proud Gullah Geechee Omanente. And then many of y'all like to do, let's all go to Gullah Gullah Island. Well, that show is based on us. 
the real sea islands. And this piece here called Searching for the Real Gullah Gullah Island gets you to see once again the stars of the show, the Days family. Ron Days is a native of St. Helena Island. His wife, Natalie, is a native of Syracuse, New York. Their children were born here and everything. I've known Ron for umpteen, 11 years. And so definitely this piece from the big story gets to tell y'all the truth for all y'all Gullah Gullah Island lovers, okay? And then you get to see, for those who love folk art, you get to see here Mr. Sam Doyle, who is from the Wallace community, God bless the dead, uh, Ronna Goodwine, God bless the dead, and Reverend Johnny Simmons, all folk artists from St. Helena Island. And then because in the narrative, we talk about our singers and a lot of our songstresses that stem from St. Helena, we could not talk about the singing that we do without talking about our official state music for South Carolina and the official music of the Gullah Geechee Nation, the spirituals and the buildings from whence they came, which are the praise houses where we still be the shout and thing like that. Is. Yes. And so once again, we have some interactive component. You don't have to play that one. We'll just scroll through there, get the treat, get that treat later, but you get a spiritual that plays. And you get to see some of our praise houses that are still standing here on St. Helena. And all those are on the National Register of Historic Places. You actually get to see the actual document where they declared this as the official music of the state and know when they also spoke of it coming from St. Helena. Many of you recognize this face because you voted her into her success. This is our Gullah Geechee American Idol, Candace Glover, who is a native of St. Helena. And we're embracing there, we're so proud of her. That was the day that we unveiled her road sign here. And then many of you from the city who went to hip hop, y'all know DJ Jazzy J, but see y'all be trying to either own him as Harlem, y'all be trying to own him in the boogie down Bronx, but yo son, He's from here, St. Helena, you know what I'm saying? Now I mean, he from right jump down the road and thing like that. And so you get to hear him talk about growing up here and he comes back and forth home all the time. Yes, I see somebody just said, wow. Yes, y'all be thinking that these folks living in the city is from the city. No, they migrated, part of that great migration. So yeah. And then we talk a little bit about the one the world knows, Dr. Buzzard, Hunter Tink Free, Hunter Be Free. So we couldn't do this all without mentioning him because when people talk about our spirituality, they always ask us about Dr. Buzzard. And so definitely here it is. This is a wonderful collage, outstanding job done by Brother Camille, who is actually uh, working with his people of Somalia, but they are at University of Minnesota. He's been there in Minnesota, he said about 20 years now. He's been in the US and it has been a blessing to work with him and to see my culture through his eyes, the way that he put this collage together of everybody that's mentioned in this section and family that's with us as well. But now we get to where we are and what's coming in the future culture and climate. So a lot of people talk about climate change just as a subject without talking about the cultural heritage and climate action. So this section speaks to that. Go ahead, let's keep scrolling. So once again, we embedded a video that was done by the Weather Channel that we thought was outstanding that addresses this issue and how it will impact Gullah Geechee culture and in particular, St. Helena Island. And one of, one of the viral videos about us that's been out there for a while. And then we also included this piece done by Climate Central that talks about sea level rise in Charleston in particular, because this is the area where they could gain the data. They weren't yet able to do what we call a fly through of St. Helena, but this shows again that juxtaposition just a little bit up the road, just up the creek yonder, up the intercoastal waterway, and how this will impact all of these sea islands if we don't do something to take climate action. And so we just wanted to give you a little bit of education about the sea islands versus, as you keep going, Dr. Derrickson, a heat island. Okay, so y'all have some chances to really look at that and interact with this piece and get to understand the difference between those two different types of island concepts when we're talking about climate science. But this is another major thing here is the inundation of water in our fields because this now begins to threaten food sovereignty. 
If it threatens food sovereignty, it threatens land sovereignty. If it threatens land sovereignty, it threatens cultural heritage and continuation of culture. And so we also had one of our students get very excited. Stuart, he was very happy to include this video about the Ocean-Based Climate Solutions Act that many of you who watch Gullah Geechee.tv, Gullah Geechee.tv, you saw when we unveiled this recently, and we'll be working with the new US administration on implementing that. And now there's a difference between climate and weather. So we included what's going on with the weather. And so that when y'all are coming to visit, you can check the weather right here. You don't have to leave the story map. And so this is a thing called Wendy. And if we click on Buford for them right now, there we go. Y'all will see it's interactive. And there are little buttons that will give you not only the weather, if we pull down on that arrow, at the if you scroll up your screen a little bit there we go then you'll get the actual whole weather report for that week and then also as we keep going we have one below for waves so if you're going out there to get in the water we want you to know what the waves would be like it's also interactive again if you click on Buford, you would get the same type of interaction and up in the right hand corner behind that white box there's a little tab there and it opens up and it lets you do some more things with Wendy. So Wendy is um, a very interesting thing to use. And if you, you'll see there's a yellow button after you go to Wendy and you can do more stuff with it and change it up. And then you can sign up for Wendy alerts, NOAA alerts, climate central alerts, because we do live in a hurricane zone. So we wanted to make sure we know that tourists don't often know how to interact to deal with those types of weather changes the way we would. So we wanted people to have those things so they would know. So that if you do what the next section says, come for C, on a chill and can be ready. So you want to talk about this, Doc? So here we, this is a culmination of a conversation I think we've been having for a long time, actually, about how to um, give people coming to visit Gullah Geechee Nation a real sense of what are actually Gullah owned businesses, Gullah Geechee owned businesses and places that are relevant to Gullah Geechee history and culture um, and futures on their own terms. So certainly you can see packaged, you know, representations by tourism bureaus of kind of where you should go and what you should see. Um, but this was a way to kind of resist being what you know, Queen refers to as museumized, and instead showing the kind of uh, how you can support the livelihoods of Gullah Geechee people who are kind of um, still with us, not in museums. Um, and so uh, there's different kinds of tours and workshops and information about the Sea Island Coalition, and the I highly recommend um, the Day Clean Journeys tour. It's will not disappoint. I mean, they're all good, but this one, you learn a lot. Oh, no. He's fun. Yeah. Um, and then, and so then we also have um, this map that's interactive and that joiner, you need to turn off your phone. We have this map that's interactive that people can actually click on the various icons because that starts to show you the churches and also the school and various businesses that are in the sort of story map journey that we've given you so that you know other places that you can come to and join us and then be able to spend some time with the people while you're here. Worship with you. And then you get a kind of map tour um, through different relevant locations throughout St. Helena. So if you sc kind of scroll down, and again, this might be going more slowly than it would normally because my computer is kind of slow today. And this one actually will take you where the other one just is focused on St. Helena. This actual story map journey takes you throughout the Gullah Geechee Nation. Okay. So each one of the different big circles you see are in different locations. So that if you are doing a coastal journey, you know along your route, what is actually Gullah Geechee owned and operated. So if you're wondering why certain sites are not on here, that should signal something to you if they're not on here, that they may not be being operated or owned by native Gullah Geechee 
It could be other recipe people were coming here. We'd have been here, okay? So all of these that you see will take you specifically so that you can economically empower Gullah Geechee people, Gullah Geechee business owners and entrepreneurs, Gullah Geechee families. The more you spend money with them, the more that they can hire other people from the community, the more that they can do that. Those folks can also pay their land taxes. We can sustain ourselves. And so you even see we have a Gullah Geechee business that's all the way in Atlanta, Georgia that's mentioned so that if you're going even there, because many times people visit the coast and then they travel to Atlanta or they come from Atlanta to here, we want you to know the authentically Gullah Geechee businesses that exist. These are all owned and operated by native Gullah Geechee. And so they each can share our legacy, our food, our crafts, our journey, not have it filtered through something that parks, recreation, and tourism is selling to you because they're gonna tell you a palatable story that no doubt somebody outside the Gullah Geechee Nation has scripted and given to them. And so these businesses at the end are online businesses. So you can connect with folks and even some of them, they come to you or they do connections. If they're doing spiritual work, for instance, they will actually set up appointments with you through Zoom or connect with you. The others are product companies. And so once again, if you want authentic things made by native Gullah Geechee, you can obtain them here. If you need services, you can get that from here. And so for your events, when we're back doing events, and then once again, there's the link. If you love the artwork you saw earlier, you can get a piece of authentic artwork from Sandra Renee, who's a native artist of St. Helena that has her art available for sale online. And when you come here, we have a couple of the Gullah Geechee Visitor Center and we have the Sisla, Courtney P. Sisloff Welcome Center, both here on St. Helena. So these images you can look at. So when you see those signs, you know those are the places you can also go into and get information. That's not just Gullah Geechee centered though, but information about the area, the region and Beaufort County. And then, do you remember earlier when we talked about the train traveling southward? If you want to learn more about We Family with Day in Florida, this part lets you go over to their map. And we've talked about that here on the show previously when we had Dr. Derrickson here before, along with our representative Glenda Simmons Jenkins, we covered this, the Gullah Geechee History and Land Ownership and Nassau County, Florida. And so this gives you an opportunity to take that journey southward from St. Helena, right from the St. Helena story map as well. And so then we bring you all the way to the closing part for more about we. You can go to the Gullah Geechee Nation's website, which most of you who come every week should know is GullahGeecheeNation.com. GullahGeecheeNation.com, G U L L A H. G-E-E-C-H-E-E-N-A-T-I-O-N.com. -E 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 That's Gullah Geechee Nation.com. Ain't no I and Geechee if it a we. And then you can also connect with Gullah Geechee TV. That's Gullah Geechee TV. You can just go straight to it and connect. And then also Gullah Geechee Rhythm Radio, which is our blog talk radio program. You can connect there. If you want to tune in, you can subscribe to it for free. And if Hunter wants support me and thing like that, eh, Hunter can buy plenty of the books and things where they're chilling be used for the course from the Gullah Geechee Nation store at Gullah Geechee.biz, Gullah Geechee.biz. Or if you're using this, this story map is located at St, spell out St all the way, Helena, H-E-L-E-N-A, Gullah Geechee.com, St. Helena, Gullah Geechee.com. And you can interact with all of these things and please, we hope that you will especially interact with what you're seeing again in the map that the students want to include over and over again so that you can take an active part in keeping the Gullah Geechee culture alive, not just on St. Helena, but throughout the Gullah Geechee Nation by going ahead, go ahead, Dr. Derek, and scroll up so that they can see that, that the Gullah Geechee Land Legacy Fund link is there again. The details are there for you to donate and you can donate via Cash App to dollar sign Gullah Geechee Nation, dollar sign Gullah Geechee Nation, or to this link at GoFundMe, the Gullah Geechee Land Legacy Fund. And then, like I've been telling Hunter chilling at the beginning, we want Hunter for staying in touch with me and things like that. We ain't say touch we now, keep your social distance. We ain't say touch you. 
Well, we say for stay in touch with me. All right. So this form is at the bottom. If you enter your email address there, when you go to interact with this again at St. Helena Gullagichi.com, St. Helena Gullagichi.com, at the end, if you enter your email address, that will add you to our new St. Helena database so that when Heritage Day starts again, or we have our other celebrations that are happening, Labor Day, and we have things going on, Fort July grounds, and we got all the rest of the thing, we the unveil at New Gully Geechee Visitor Center with D and all that kind of thing. Y'all will know you'll get direct email invitations to that. And you'll also get educational material that will be coming out for each and every section of this but don't forget you can download the bibliography from any one of those links in there and then order books and if you're going to order books from amazon please use smile smile.amazon.com and use the Gullah Geechee angel network as the fundraiser or the charity that you're supporting so it's smile.amazon.com use the Gullah Geechee angel network and as you know we be Gullah Geechee anointed people. And so we as the Gullah Geechees wanna thank everyone who was an active part of creating the story map. And you'll see a whole list at the very bottom of the story map of all the acknowledgements of all the people. Yes, it looks like a movie credit screen mm -hmm. with all the people who contributed to making this possible. And one of those folks is also my engineer that's here for all of y'all for zooming in on sustainability, Sister Kaylee. Y'all don't get to see her, but she behind the scenes. So I'm just gonna give her a round of applause while she behind the scenes, you know, and everything. So we appreciate it because we have this ongoing partnership with the University of Minnesota. So thank you, Dr. Derrickson for sharing the screen. We wanna go ahead and switch back. Yes, you are so welcome, Kaylee. We appreciate your work. And everybody that's been coming and supporting us weekly, we so much appreciate you because you thought I'm not robbery for Marco 3 p.m. on Wednesdays for day of for zooming in on sustainability. And I'm so happy that y'all had an opportunity to zoom in on my culture and my cultural community. And next week, we're going to have a party here, y'all. It's going to be a party next week because we got the whole family coming back. The whole Gullah Geechee family would be in the country because some people going out the country, y'all, not they want to go back to the motherland in the months of the pandemic. Some of them ain't going to for that. But the rest of them would be coming. We're going to have a party right here. We're going to have a good time. We're going to crack we teeth for who we be down y'all. So y'all make sure all of y'all Gullah Geechee will be on your live. Make sure to tell your family for join we too. It could be all about we next week. And and this year week, we so glad he got the Derrickson that we had this focus on St. Helena and the Gullah Geechee story. Now, I know, like you said in the beginning, you and I have talked about this a long time, different sections in it. We've talked about it individually, getting correct information to tourists, the people who want to learn about Gullah Geechee, who want the truth or the Gullah centric view of our culture and not somebody else's Eurocentric view of our culture and our traditions. From your perspective, as someone who are come here, you ain't a binya. What do you think about this story map and how do you feel that it's finally completed and it's here? I think that it is a, a incredibly moving tribute to um, the culture of St. Helena Gullah Geechees and to Gullah Geechee, the Gullah Geechee diaspora more broadly. I um, have been learning over the past many years that we've been working together how hard it is how much work is involved in just constantly pushing back against problematic representations uh problematic descriptions or inaccuracies um and just the we were discussing this yesterday just the way that um the even just friendly editors will kind of um, rob some writing and representations of its real soul um, mm -hmm. and kind of edit. Sometimes it feels like Gullah Geechees get edited out of stories about Gullah Geechees. Yeah. And so it's been um, really wonderful to have the students have the opportunity to learn how to be ethical, effective collaborators and not do that act of editing people out of their own stories. And so, you know, I think it looks a little bit different than, or a lot 
lot different than what you might see on a brochure or what you might see on a travel website. But it reads to me, in my experience, is extremely true to St. Helena. And so I'm really grateful for the opportunity to work on it. I'm really deeply appreciative of the work that the students did. And I'm I'm so pleased to see the, this come to fruition. Um, and I hope that it does justice to the people in the place in the way that it seems to me to do. So I'm excited to see in the comments that people are have, have a positive reaction to it. And I'm looking forward to it being shared throughout the island. Yes, definitely. And throughout the world. Mm -hmm. So I don't put y'all to work now. Y'all who to watch this, you're sure y'all some of the first one for sure. We sure to them other children, you study at the university first, and then y'all the first one forget that URL. So again, St. Helena, right out St. all the way, St. Helena, GullahGeechee.com. Make sure you look at it, interact with it, share it. And then at the bottom, make sure to send us your email so we'll have you in our database. Dr. Derrickson, thank you. Thank you for truly resourcing the St. Helena Island community. We appreciate you. We can we appreciate continuing to work with you and the Gullah Geechee Sustainability Think Tank. And this is showing you why it's called a think tank. Folks got to think, we got to use our minds for the betterment of our communities and the upliftment of our people. So that's what we all about because we be Gullah Geechee anointed people and anointed blessed people can do nothing but shine. That black gold is still shining and it's a blessing for all of you who've been here with us today. So if you want some more information on the work that's coming forward and the things that we're doing, continue to follow Gullah .tv and you'll be able to share this broadcast once again. So y'all can, if you want tips on how to interact with it and you want to rewatch it or you want to share it with others, follow GullahGeechee.tv, subscribe there for free. Follow GullahGeecheeNation.com, GullahGeecheeNation.com. And now, enter your information at St. Helena, GullahGeechee.com. All right. And if you're looking for me, I'm at QueenQuet.com, QueenQuet.com. So, Hona Chillin, please join the Gullah Geechee Sea Island Coalition at GullahGeechee.net and gullahgeechee.biz. You can go to gullahgeechee.biz and purchase many of the books that informed this process, informed the students, educated them, and then this was the outcome of a perspective that isn't often written into his story, but this is the outcome of an education through our story, where we teach who we be, and we be Gullah Geechee anointed people. So happy holy days, peace, blessings, love, health, and safety to all the hundred children. We going to see you next week for more Zooming In on sustainability. This year, the Queen Quet, head from the body of the Gullah Geechee Nation. So glad it for shout about the Centelna Gullah Geechee story. Peace and blessings, everybody.